Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you for that uh, very kind introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure for me to uh, speak to you today on this topic of SIRS. I'm very glad that all of you have made the effort and the time to come down. Now, I am not going to talk to you about the technical aspects of SIRS, all right? I think for that, my other colleagues like Zihian and others before him have said the needful. But I want to take up from where Zihian left off. And you know this issue of SIRS has consumed our country for the last two weeks or three weeks. All right? It has been the hottest issue under discussion. And rightfully so, because 85%, 85% of Singaporeans live in HDB. All right? And let me say this. When this issue exploded, you would have thought that at the last sitting of Parliament, which was earlier this week, there would be so many questions asked. And it is a topic of urgency, isn't it? Because so many people have been infuriated, frustrated, not least the elderly. But, you know, on opening day of Parliament, when Leong Man Wai of the PSP tabled eight questions, I believe. Zihian, am I right? Eight questions? Nine questions. For nine nine questions for, for discussion in Parliament. You know, he was met with the answer by the Deputy Speaker, I think, that procedurally there was something wrong and that the clerk needed to check whether the petition submitted was in order. You know, let's not stand on ceremony, my friends. Parliament is meant to be a forum where important, urgent matters of the state are discussed. All right? Do you ever see a situation, an urgent situation, being bypassed in the British House of Commons because of procedural issues? All right, do you see the speaker or the deputy speaker saying there, oh, it, it, yeah, um, you know, let's wait and see if, your, if the clerk thinks that your motion is in order or something to that effect. That is not what parliament is meant to be. And I thought that on the second day of parliament, they said for two days only, yeah, this week, okay? And remember this, our parliamentarians are paid a handsome sum of $16,000 a month. And you compare their sitting time to what parliaments in countries like the UK, Australia, and you, you realize that the sitting time is minuscule. All right? And on an important topic like that, they don't want to answer the questions. What do they do instead? They have Desmond Lee give a ministerial statement. And it seems like our ministers these days are experts at giving ministerial statements, but not answering the questions directly. You know, a ministerial statement is a pre-prepared statement, all right? I don't know whether the minister prepares it himself or whether the civil servants do a lot of it for him. And of course, you are not going to have the detailed discussions. Unlike when you have to answer specifically to a question. And you know who was the missing person in this whole saga? Wasn't it the prime minister? But this incident this incident, this fiasco, I would say, occurred right in the heart of his constituency. And if you go to central Ang Mokyo, 
I think you can even see the four blocks of flats there. All right? So, I will say this. I think Singaporeans have every right to be disappointed, to be disgusted, that on such an important topic, the people's representatives did not see it fit to address the issue. But next, ladies and gentlemen, I am not going to touch on the technicalities, but let me say what I think this whole saga has illustrated. This whole saga has illustrated what many residents in Jalan Besar GRC and Tanjong Paga GRC told me this morning when we did a walkabout at Pekyo Market where we brought our Bread for All program there. And so many residents came up to speak to me. And you know, from what I could gather from them, the golden thread, the golden thread is this. People no longer think that Singapore is a fair country. And isn't that the problem with SIRS? With this particular SIRS, when you are being forced to move, you would think, as one lady put it so beautifully in that video, which went viral, which I posted and went viral, give an apple for an apple. All right? Don't give me a replacement flat when my flat is within walking distance of the MRT. Don't give me a flat that is completely different in location, which is not so convenient for people to walk to public transportation. Yeah? And, and then what do you find? you find the HDB and the government scrambling, scrambling for a solution. You know? They come up with a 50-year lease. And then I don't know what, as Zuhian explained earlier, 30-year lease with a lease buyback or whatever. Now, don't you think it is fair if you propose this, sirs, that the person especially the person who has paid up fully for the flat should be given an equivalent. And definitely, when you have 361 people or thereabouts signing a petition, it means that people don't feel that they have been treated fairly, right? But that is the problem with this government, my friends. Because I can say this in all good conscience. For the last 25 to 28 years, the government of this country has been distilled down to dollars and cents. Yeah. Everything is about the bottom line. Everything is about dollars and cents, which is why you have this row going on. If I am supposed to get an apple for an apple, there should be no problem. But then you start having this government tell people, oh no, it's because the replacement flat I'm giving you now is actually more valuable than what you had previously. My friends, you know, when you distill government into dollars and cents, you are going to get a very disappointed citizenry. Yeah? And it is not just sirs. You look at the issues that confront our nation today. You look at the grouses of Singaporeans who have been displaced by cheap foreign labor, priced out of the labor market in their own country, many of whom are so well educated but can't find a good job or are underemployed. You know, a country is not meant to be a transit hotel.
All right, let me tell you this. The constituents of a country are the citizens. It is no use making male citizens serve two years in the army, expecting them to fight when they feel disappointed that their government is not looking after their interests. And I say this, when we face a real war, will we be able to summon the indomitable spirit that we have witnessed from the Ukrainians? Totally outgunned, outnumbered, but they have not been run over, have they? All right? You find they are well-known figures, models, champion tennis players, champion boxers, who could be in other parts of Europe earning millions of dollars coming back to defend their country. And I ask you a simple question. When the government doesn't fulfill its obligations and its role to the citizens, do you think that the citizens are going to be committed to the defense of this country? I could go on and on, all right? But there is something fundamentally wrong with our public housing policy, a policy which had noble ideals, that every Singaporean would have a roof over his or her head, an affordable shelter. And now, you know, now you have HDB selling for up to 1.4 million in Henderson. The other day, a unit in Yishun transacted for one million. This is just a few of quite a number of cases now. And Singaporeans are rightly worried, aren't they? I mean, do you know that 35% of Singaporeans, and I'm going by the statistics provided by Zihian, 35% of Singaporeans either earn either take home less than $2,400 a month or are unemployed. If your HDB is going to cost one million, you tell me how many years that Singaporean has to work if he is to buy that property. So, your housing policy is completely out of whack, all right? But this government doesn't want to recognize the problem. All it is prepared to say is, oh, this is the free market at play. Let me tell them, there is no such thing as a free market without regulations. Do you think you can buy a HDB property today and flip it tomorrow? You can't, right? You've got to satisfy the five-year MOP, the minimum occupancy period. So what, are we, what free market are we talking about? Every free market has rules and regulations. And if you want to conform to the original KHDB mission, you must have rules and regulations. But instead, over the last 25 years, KHDB has become like a casino, a platform for people to make money. All right? And I tell you, I say the person I put the blame on is Go Chok Tong because of his so-called asset enhancement program. This is a serious problem, my friends. At the rate we are going, at the rate they are importing foreigners in to our country. And you know, now what is happening in, China, in, in Hong Kong? The professionals, many of them are flocking to Singapore, right? Because everyone can't stand what the Chinese government is doing in, in Hong Kong. So a few weeks ago, when I tried to reserve a table at a Chinese restaurant for dinner because I had guests, you know what? I couldn't get a table. I called up several well-known hotels and restaurants. Everyone was packed. Yeah, we have an influx. We have an influx of foreigners. And that is driving up our housing and it is pricing our Singaporeans out of the housing market. 
I will never forget what a Canadian classmate of mine told me 30 odd years ago now when I was doing my masters she was already a practicing barrister uh, an advocate a lawyer in Vancouver her hometown and she complained to me she said you know Tian I can't even buy an apartment in my hometown because the Hong Kongers have priced me out of the market because if you remember in 1989 90 that was before Hong Kong reverted back to Chinese rule and they were all flocking to Vancouver amongst other places that is what you get and that is where government needs to step in to regulate in order to protect the interests of the citizens but you have a government now with a boat up attitude right the higher the price the better they think they think but we are going to have a serious problem because my friends our wages are not increasing that fast in fact I believe our wages have stagnated for a very long period of time so yes sirs is a big problem sirs will continue to be a big problem because now Singaporeans have woken up to the reality after what Lawrence Wong told them a few years ago the balloon has popped and people realize that there is zero value to a flat after 99 years but the government is not solving the problem the government is exacerbating the problem and so I ask you to seriously think of this issue of fairness because many Singaporeans now realize that the most important thing that we must do is to build a fairer society but you are not going to get it with this bunch of PAP in the Parliament and that is why we need change all right I'm not I'm not I'm not talking in platitudes here we need change you are not going to have change when you continue to have this government who believe in these policies and before I conclude let me say this SIRS is now the raging topic I invite I invite all the political parties in Singapore including the PAP to a debate on this issue all are welcome in fact the person who should represent the PAP should be none other than Lawrence Wong the presumptive heir to Lee Hsien Loong as the next Prime Minister the PSP the WP the SDP RP all should be at the same table and let's see how the discussions pan out and what are actually the solutions I am not going to listen to the Straits Times every day running to me absurd articles all right downright absurd articles and misleading articles suggesting that residents there are happy with a 50-year lease or a 30-year lease yeah let all of us come together and see how this problem can be resolved thank you very much